I've come a long way. I've seen how you were. There's so much goodness and grace. Much more than I deserve. Cause I know who I am. And I can't stay where I'm at. Oh, we've come this far by faith. Oh, yes, we have. And I just can't turn around. Cause he's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. Hey! There's so much more to the story. Stop believing right now. Don't quit believing right now. God is more than Who am I? Who am I? Still can do it. Who am I? Just because I haven't seen it in my lifetime. That doesn't mean he can't do it. Who am I to deny what the Lord <laughs> Just cause it's not on my resume Or just cause I don't have it Doesn't mean he can't do it Or who am I to deny Joy could you 
Well, good morning, Peerless Road Church. We are so thrilled that you're here today. My name is Christy Schalk, and on behalf of our entire pastoral staff, we want to welcome you to this beautiful Palm Sunday. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13 says, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. As it turns out, while we do, we are about to celebrate Easter, we're very excited. We have moved Pastor Appreciation Month to the month of April permanently. So while it feels like we just did it in October, we did, but we're gonna be moving it to April from this point forward. So it is Pastor Appreciation Month and I am thrilled about this one. <laughs> yes, we love our pastor. So a couple of things, if Ms. Renee will put the slide up, there are, I want you to start sending in your testimonials about your entire pastoral staff. Pastor Adam, Pastor Josh, Pastor Kathy, Pastors John and Lindsay, these are the ways you can make that happen. So you can either email me, my name is Christy Schalk, that is my email address right there. You can write it down on a piece of paper and hand it to me. This is my face, it looks like this. So find me and hand me that piece of paper. Or you can scan this QR code, which will take you to a form. All you have to do is pull out your smartphone, open the photo, your camera app, snap a picture of this, and it will take you directly to the form to fill that out. And I will be sharing those throughout the month with our pastoral staff. So we want you to do that. Let me move out of the way of the QR code. Um, sorry about that one. I'll go to this side of the stage. Uh, we just want to make sure that you are giving us your testimonials about the entire pastoral staff. Choose one, choose all of them, and share those stories with us so that we can make sure that they feel loved and they hear the positive message going out above all of the negative that they may sometimes hear. I know that we are a very positive and loving church, so they rarely hear that, but we still want to make sure that those positive voices are louder than those negative ones. All right, guys, guess what it, time it is now? We get to continue in worship, and this worship comes from the deepest part of your heart, and it is to worship in giving. So I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. Today our offerings will be going to Peerless Ministries, all of the different ministries you see in our building. We will be sending our offerings to that today. But I want to say that often we are asked to raise a hand, and we do it. We're asked to sing a song in worship, and we do it. We're asked to lift our voice in praise, and we do it. But it seems that when it comes to our money, we have a much harder time in doing that as a form of worship. But it is truly a form of worship to God, not to man, not to our church, but to the one who gave us life and breathes life into us every day. Let me pray over this offering and over all of you today. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to walk into your house, to give you the worship that you alone deserve. God, we pray today would be a day of blessing for every person in this place and every person watching online. God, we pray that you would take these offerings, multiply them for your glory and your work. And it is in your precious name we pray. Amen. The next day, the great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. This crowd praised him. They celebrated his miracles and with great expectation told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might. But he came as a humble servant. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory, but he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They thought he could offer them deliverance from their oppressors, but he came offering deliverance from sin. This crowd would soon realize that Jesus wasn't gonna be what they wanted and they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. So as they yelled, crucify, Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that kind of king. 
His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. His kingdom is truth. His kingdom is goodness. His kingdom is righteousness. He is the humble king, the king of healing, the king of forgiveness, the king of love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sin. Come dwell in our hearts. Hosanna, we worship you. Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. The King is in the house this morning. Would you stand with us this morning? Lord, we invite you into our presence this morning. Lord, we know that you are already here. But God, we open up our hearts to you. We open up our minds to you. And we ask that you be worshipped in this place this morning. The scripture says, who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle, the King of glory. Lord, we worship you this morning in spirit and in truth.
morning church hands lifted all across this place God we honor you today God simply because you are worthy God you're worthy of all the blessing all the honor all the glory anything that we can offer you this morning anything that we could speak this morning anything that we could sing about this morning anything that we could preach about this morning father you are worthy of it all God you have been so good to us God, that you remain faithful even when we're faithless. God, that you have called us, that you have chosen us. We are a people that are set apart. We are a royal priesthood. And God, you are worthy of anything that we could bring this morning. We're worthy. You're worthy of any honor this morning. It all belongs to you. 
As we transition to this ministry moment, I want to share a passage of scripture with you found in James. In case you're not familiar, our, our ministry moment is a time where we just set aside where we have door holders that come up and are ready to pray with you for any need that you may have. And I don't know about you. How many of you got a need in the house this morning? I know there's some needs all over this house. So this is the time that we set aside to say, hey, we want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. James chapter 5, verse 14 says, anyone, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Just in case you didn't get it the first time, I want to read it to you one more time because I, I don't know about you. I consider myself a man of faith. I pursue God. I pray. I read my word. And some of you are in the same boat as I am, yet... Sometimes you may feel like your prayer falls on deaf ears. You feel like your prayer isn't effective. You feel like your prayer isn't powerful. But I want to come and encourage you this morning that there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven that is looking over us right now that is ready to meet you where you're at. So I want to read it to you one more time. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, cons confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And I don't know about you, but when I read this, there's a lot of definite answer in this passage. It says that the prayer of a righteous person is effective, that the Lord will heal the sick, the Lord will raise them up. So I want to encourage you this morning as we get ready to open up these altars and transition into this ministry moment, that there is a God in heaven that is ready to meet you where you're at. There is a son that is seated at the right hand of the Father that is ready to meet you where you're at. So what I want to do is we're just going to, they're going to continue in worship. I want to open up these altars right now, whatever the need may be. It could be something you consider small or it could be something that is life altering but I want to open these up don't be ashamed this is not a place of shame this is a place of communion a place that we have set aside for you to meet and commune with the father so as they continue in worship there's needs across the house the prayer of a righteous person is very effective so as we open up these altars and they continue in worship, I just want to open it up, invite you to come, find somebody to pray with. If you'd like to pray by yourself, this altar right here, this space right here is set aside for you. Come, come.
Sunday. Palm Sunday is where they would go and they would lay down the palm branches or branches from the trees and the fields as he came into the city. And they would cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. They were anticipating that a militant king would rise up, yet he came to not be a militant king, but to be the king of kings. Not to just be a king who would vanquish other kings, but would be the king who would reign above every other king. Right there where you're at, we, we have some that we wanted to continue to, to pray, but just raise your hands and surrender right there where you're at. Can we just invite and just in your own way, at the end of this of the Palm Sunday chapter, the Bible says that the disciples would, with a loud praise, would, would give their personal praise. However you choose to give your praise to Jesus this morning, whether it's silent, whether it's verbal, whether it's a, whether it's a hand clap or whatever, I want you to, in your own way, we just want to, we want to surrender, but we also want to give him praise in this house today. Father, we are here because we surrender our lives to you. Father, in James 4 and 7, it says, submit yourselves or surrender yourselves there for to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. A promise, a promise. As Father, we surrender our lives to you in this moment. Father, we surrender our thoughts, our apprehensions, our anxieties, Father. We surrender both our victories, Lord. We surrender the areas of our life, Father, where, where we're wondering the, the, the next steps. But Father, we pray that today, Lord, that you would give us, Lord, that let the words of knowledge, let the gifts of the Spirit, Father, the words of wisdom, let the gift of faith, Father. Lord, let the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation, Lord, let, let all the gifts of the Spirit, God, be in full operation this morning. Father, not for us to be lifted up, not for anybody to be identified, but Father, for you to receive all the glory and all the honor and all of the praise. Father, for us to walk away from here recognizing that only, it was only God who spoke to me in this moment. It was only God that revealed that to my heart this moment. Father, we come before you right now in Jesus' name, turning our attention and our eyes toward Easter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, 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 amen. Look at somebody beside you, close to you. Just tell them you've never looked better than you do right now. Just look at them. Just greet them. Just bring them. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. We are so excited to be here. We are so excited for what the Lord is doing in our li in our lives today. And and uh, we've there's so many things that are happening. So many things that are happening this week. It's Holy Week, and it's a week where we uh, almost I mean the entire world recognizes that something changed this week, many, many generations and years ago. Uh, th there's so many things that are happening. Of course, we want to just say thank you already uh, in this week. Just take a few minutes. So, so whoever starts the clock, don't start it just yet. Give me just a few moments. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway, the, our mission team is getting ready to go. We've got two mission teams this year. One's going to, to Casper, Wyoming. It's changed from Billings, Montana. There's been some changes in leadership there. And so we're still one in that region. We're just changing uh, the location. And then, of course, in the, the trip to the Pine Ridge, Indian Reservation uh, in North Dakota. And so there are shirts that are being sold by the, Mon the Billings, Montana slash Casper Wyoming team. Um, Sister Stephanie McKinley right over here just waves everybody. If you And they are selling PRC shirts that are behind me. Um, and uh, if you can get your very own PRC shirt today, this is the last day. Um, they may come back later, but uh, there's, the order's going to be placed today. And so we want to do that. Also, 21 days of prayer. Uh, many of you have signed up on the 21st day of the month. We have been praying for for almost a year now. You have been praying for the city of Cleveland, the, the, the county of Bradley, the state of Tennessee, the United States of America, the world. And so Sister Linda Redante, where are you at? Sister Linda uh, has a small gift from you just to let you know. And so please see her um, after that, of course, and uh, many different things um, that are taking place. We love our door holders here at Peerless Road Church. What is a door holder? If you're here for the first time, it is anybody who opens the door, whether it's a praise team, I'm going to open up the door through the word in just a few minutes, whether you literally open the door on Sunday morning. And so we're in need of a lot of door holders next week for Easter Sunday. And so if you would like to help in any capacity, you've never helped before, you would love to, to just be a part of that and to help in any way, we would love to have you. We want you to show up at 930 next Sunday morning in the Welcome Center, and we'll give you some instructions 
questions and puts you in a place and we'll also feed you as well. And so if you would love to help us out next Sunday, just be here at 930 as well. Last, this past Sunday um, was, a, was a powerful time as we sort of shifted and we get out of the book of Joshua uh, and we begin to turn our eyes toward Easter. And there's a lot of things, of course, uh, that are taking place this week. And this past week, a lot of things uh, have taken place in our state. This will be the first time um, since the shooting at Covenant uh, Christian School, which was also a church. Um, the pastor's daughter uh, of that church was one of the victims that was taken out this week. And we want to just have not just a moment of silence to remember that. We, we recognize what is happening um, in the world, and we just want to begin to just have a moment of silence and prayer um, for this pastor, for this family. It became real um, when, I, when I found that information out. And let's just pray for that entire community uh, and church uh, for just a few moments. Let us pray for this church. Father, our nation is in need of a savior. This world is in need of a savior. Lord, in this week, it got closer to home as it's been the first school shooting in the state of Tennessee. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you just begin to surround, Lord, this pastor and his family, Lord, that you would surround this church. Lord, that you would surround the family of the shooter, Father God. There are so many, God, that are in need of a touch. Lord, there are so many that are battling, Lord, the vices and voices, and Lord. And we just pray that the voice of love, the voice of the Savior, God, will just begin to rise up in our, in our nation, in our world, Father, right now. We turn our eyes to you, Jesus, and we're asking you, Father God, to just touch, Lord, and to be, Lord, with this family and be with this church family in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. We also want you to be in prayer for us this week and, and uh, as, as, as we go forward, I want to just give you just a, a just brief moment um, if I can hear some voices in the back, if you could just uh, tell them to just... Um, pray a little bit softer, if you don't mind. We want them to continue to pray. But uh, anyway, as we get ready, there's a lot of things that are taking place. Just to give you a, a brief update, where we're at in our sanctuary, of course, uh, we are waiting on the city. Uh, we, we've got to get stamps. We have to have it uh, inspected by our building inspectors as well. And so we are moving speedily along. We've got teams and committees. Brother Jerry Nunnery is our property committee chairperson. He's been leading the teams. Brother Jerry, we are so thankful for his leadership and the different ones in this community that are helping to do that. And of course, and you know, we haven't had a sign for a while, right? And, and I told you last week, I couldn't announce it, but finally this week I can tell you that, uh, that, that we've got a little bit more waiting to do, but there is a path. A couple of weeks ago, we were told we could not get our sign. It was denied uh, because we want an LED sign and it was denied. And so we went back, we prayed for favor. We prayed for the sun to stand still over that. And uh, now we know that our property is zoned residential. We have to change that zoning request. And so if we can get everything done by April, we can get in front of the planning commission in May and by June. It's up to the city council, and then we can finally move forward with our sign. And, uh, and so just there's a lot of things happening, uh, and it feels like nothing's happening. But I promise you there are people that are working, and so we are so thankful for, uh, for what the Lord is doing, and it's getting closer. Uh, also, uh, Sister Jane Van Devender, where are you located, Sister Jane? I saw you just a second ago. It's back in the back. Um, on May 31st, Sister Jane is going to be retiring from full-time uh, ministry. She has served faithfully as our church administrator here at Peerless Road Church. And uh, we're going to be honoring her on May the 21st. But we want to announce this, but as, for, as a church, uh, she has been such a... a uh, a staple has had her hand uh, in leading this congregation for the last 26 years. Well, at the end of May 31st, will be 26 years. And so we just want to be uh, prayerful for our um, finance and administrative committee as we go in the next process and uh, it just be, just bring it before you and just let you be praying for us in prayer and fasting as we go in the next direction. Okay. And so we want to be praying for her. Can we give Sister Jane, let her know we love her and we'll be praying for her appreciating her.
she will be continuing to help us in part time and until a specified time to help us out as we train the new person. But I know she's looking forward to, to what lies ahead and she is a inter, continue to be an integral part. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verses 1, now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and to Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village in front of you and immediately as you enter it, you will of which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it, and if anyone says to you, why are you doing this, say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they had let them, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and the others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And they entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. Every gospel writer in the synoptic gospels and John write about the donkey. They talk about him riding on a donkey, on a colt. But only John mentions the palm branches specifically. This week I was laughing with Braylon. I told her, I said, do you think it should be called Donkey Sunday instead of Palm Sunday? She was like, mm -mm. So anyway, but today I want to look at the Palm Sunday a little bit differently maybe than we ever have by, by focusing on the donkey. If the donkey could talk. Over 500 years before this moment that is written down in the Bible, it was prophesied by the prophet Zechariah. In Zechariah 9 and 9, he says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I think the donkey is a lot like me and you, if you want me to be honest. Now don't look at your spouse, don't look at your neighbor, don't pick up your phone and text somebody and say, he's finally gonna talk about you this morning. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. There's lessons I believe that we can learn as we look at this Palm Sunday today. In Mark 11, Mark 11 the first two verses, let's just go back to it. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, Another passage says that Jesus turned his eyes toward Jerusalem. It's where he had healed the, the lame. He had opened up blinded eyes. He had done many miracles in which the last verse in John says that if enough had been written that you couldn't even, there's not enough pages to write down everything that Jesus did. We have a conglomeration in scriptures. But when there come a moment in time where the miracles and were about to begin to, to begin to diminish a little bit and he was about to fulfill the very purpose of his coming, the cross. He turned his eyes towards Jerusalem because he knew that that's where he was headed. In this moment in time, he begins to do that and, and he begins to tell his disciples that another prophecy is about to be fulfilled. Go and look for them on a colt that is tied up and untie it and bring it, he says. The first lesson that we can learn about the donkey, if the donkey could talk, is that he would tell you he was all tied up. The donkey was all tied up. We're a lot like the donkey because some of us are all tied up. We, it looks like everything's right. We, we have, the, we have the, the appearance 
of a Christian. We have the appearance of a follower, just like this donkey had the appearance of a donkey, and he was a donkey. And listen, just because the donkey was tied up, and just because we have the appearance of, a, of, a, of, a, of being a Christian, does not mean that we're a Christian. But yet, just the same way that the donkey had the appearance and was a donkey, he was tied up. He was a donkey that was tied up. He was restricted. Follow me what I'm saying. In Proverbs 5 and 22, it says, The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. In Acts 8 and 23, in the, in the, in the New, New Testament, he says, in the New International Version, it says, For I see that you are full of bitterness and are captive. You're tied up to sin. Notice what Paul said. Paul was saying, listen, he knew, the apostle Paul knew that he was a Christian. He knew that the grace of God was upon his life. But yet in Romans 7, 15, look what he says. He says, for I do not understand my own actions. For what I do not want to do, I do. For what I do not do, I, what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. He would go on to say, I do what I don't want to do. And what I don't want to do, that's what I find myself doing. He was saying, I'm all tied up. And a little bit later in that scripture, he says, listen, but who will save me? Who's going to loose me? Who is going to be the one that sets me free from me doing what my sinful actions, what I want to do? John Wesley would talk about the Christian perfection, how the sanctifying, it wasn't just having a relationship with Jesus, but he came to an understanding that the blood of Jesus was all powerful and that he could walk on this earth and be perfected in not only in the image of Christ, not only in the eyes of Christ, but he could have a perfect life. Why? Why? Because the power, the blood of Jesus is powerful enough to not just forgive us from our sins, but to enable us to walk out of sin and walk in righteousness and talk in righteousness, act in righteousness, be righteousness, the righteousness of God on this earth. This is what he was saying. What I'm saying is there are things in our lives, the first point this morning, there are things in our lives that if we don't get control of them, they will begin to control us. You want to know what makes what, the, what some of the markings of a Christian are? Even in the fruit of the Spirit, it says one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. But can I tell you something? You can sit here and try to lose weight, and you can go on Weight Watchers and everything, you know, Jenny Craig and everything else there is. But if you lose control, if you lose the ability to control those actions, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose control. But can I tell you, uh, listen, I'll, I'll just go ahead and tell you. You know, we went on the fast for 21 days. You know, I went 70 days without having a soda. Yeah, praise the Lord, right? 70 days. A couple of weeks ago, I was flying back here, and, uh, and, I, was, and I, was, I was somewhere in the, in the airport. I was at a lounge in the airport in, in Atlanta, and I went there, and you know what? There was no water. The water station was empty. They were switching in between breakfast and lunch, I guess. There was no water canisters. There was no lemonade containers. There were no tea containers. I couldn't even get unsweet tea, and I had sugar if I wanted to. There was nothing except the bar and a soda fountain, and I wasn't going to touch that. <laughs> so I sent a picture to my girls, and I said, hey, I said, this is the first day in 70 days because they're on my back constantly. They're like, Daddy, we want you to be healthy. We want you to, we want you to do this. I was like, hey, first time in 70 days. And don't you know that what they would do? They would say, you don't have to have it. I was like, I got to wash it down with something, you know? Now listen, I came back and I've not lost complete control, but I can tell that drive for sugar and for soda is calling at me a whole lot more than the 70 days I went without it. And if I don't get a hold of it, and you say, well, I, that's, that's, that's pretty petty. Let me tell you something. Some of us might not be tied up with sin, but let me ask you this. How many of you can go one day without doing drugs. Raise your hand. You know you can go one day without doing drugs. How many of you can go one day without drinking alcohol? Okay. How many of you can go one day without um, killing somebody? <laughs> right? You might think about it, but you know you can go one day without doing it. Okay. Let me ask you this. Pretty easy, right? How many of you can raise your hands and say, I'm, I can go a whole day without saying anything negative about anybody. Including yourself. Inclu including yourself, amen. Anything negative whatsoever. 
You know, in the love dare that, that came out a couple of years ago, one of the first the love dares in that challenge is to go 24 hours without saying anything negative to your spouse. That was written to people who are in the, in the constraints of marriage, who are, who are trying to look for a miracle in marriage. And I, I know I'm going off on beat, so to speak, but I want to say, how many of you can go a day without saying anything negative about anyone, anything, including yourself? It's hard to do. How many, how many of you can say I can do that? Nobody, because you know what? If we're not careful, the negative things can begin to tie us up and we don't even realize it. Just like this, this donkey, we can get tied up to sin. Yes, we can get tied up to shame. We can get tied to pain. We can get tied to anger. We can get tied to our past. We can get tied to greed. We can get tied to grief. We can get tied to bitterness. We can, we can let things tie us up because before we even realize it, it it's, it's, beginning to, it's a slow fade. And listen, I'm, so what I'm saying, is, is that we can be fully in a relationship with Jesus Christ, but yet there are things in our life that, the, that will come and betie us. The enemy doesn't necessarily need sin to come into a Christian's life. To a baby Christian, he can go after it. But he knows there are some things that he can come at with me, and I'm not even going to pay any attention to it. But if he puts me in the right environment with the right situation and the right thoughts come across, he can begin to tie that noose around my neck, and he can begin to tie things around my life, and if not careful... I can begin to be tied up. You ever seen the elephants in a circus? Did you know that the elephant is the smartest animal on earth and one of the strongest? If you will, just pay attention to this, this short video real quick from Dr. Tony Evans. If you've ever driven to a circus, you'll see the elephants standing out on the parking lot, right? The elephants will be out on the parking lot, these huge, powerful beasts. But they don't go anywhere. They don't run. They don't move. You know why? Because they got a chain around one of their legs. A little teeny chain with a little teeny peg in the ground that these beasts could rip out any old time they feel like it. Because they got the power. They got the power. All they got to do is jerk that leg and that little peg would come out of that and rip that concrete and tear that chain, but they don't budge. You know why? Because they were taught ever since they were a little baby elephant that when you feel this chain, you have no power. From the time they were born, when you feel this chain on your leg, that means you are nothing, you are nobody, and you don't move. Because you're not here to demonstrate your power, you're here to perform. And we got a lot of Christians who aren't here to demonstrate their power, they're here to perform. And so you come to church on Sunday and you perform, but you don't have any power. You come, you drag in church with this chain on your leg, this chain on your leg, talking about, I'm coming to worship God, and I'm coming, and he's able with this chain on your leg, and he's so high you can't get over with this chain on your leg, and, and he's so wide you can't get around, and you got this chain on your leg performing for the circus, and the hell is laughing at you eating its cotton candy with that chain on your leg. It's time for you to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, get off of me. Let me go. Get that chain off of me. I'm free, and he who the Son sets free is free indeed. You're free. Walk like it. Act like it. Are you free? Are you free? Are you free? Did Jesus make you free? Then walk like it. Talk like it. Act like it. Hold your head up high and be free. Set you free. He set you free. So my question is, are you free today? If you're free, give him praise in his house. And listen to me. If you're free, but listen, if you're not free, I've told you before, you don't have to wait for the altar call. Your faith meets with the belief that God can set you free right there in your moment with the, every ounce of faith that you have, the thing that's tying you up, if it's grief, and listen, it's real, no one's trying to tell you that this thing that you're feeling and the pain that you're going through and the anger and the bitterness, no one's trying to take that away from you. But what I'm trying to bring to you is the hope of Jesus Christ, that you don't have to be tied anymore to it, that when he came on the cross of Calvary and came out of the empty grave, he came 
came to set you free. So you can pray right now and you can be free right now. All you have to do, let's just pray. Father, I thank you right now that your grace is setting those people free. I thank you, Lord, that people may be watching online right now, but they're being set free in houses, in cars, on couches, Lord, in living rooms with families. Husbands are praying, wives are praying, children are praying for parents, parents are praying for children, people are praying for ourselves. And Father, we're praying, set us free with every ounce of faith I have. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help me to pull away. Lord, to walk out of the chain. I'm holding the keys of the cell that I'm in, but you've given me freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, make me free. I believe in Jesus' name. If you believe that can happen, say amen. amen. Give God praise one more time in his house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. There is hope. You know, it's, it's just like a little child. I remember the story a couple of years ago that this little child, the, the management was called, and I tried to do it one time when I was a child. But you know, you, you got these little claw machines, right? And you see them, and all of a sudden, you know, the, this this little this little uh, animal was sticking just over the edge of it, and this little boy goes and he begins to put his little arm inside of that, and he gets a hold of the animal, and then he realizes he's stuck. He's stuck. And then everybody's trying to come over. The manager's trying to tell him, son, you, 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 you listen, we're trying to figure out a way to, to get the door off, trying to get him up. And all he had to realize is if he would just let go of that animal, he could wiggle his arm the same, out the same way he come here. You see, the whole thing, the, what God is trying to tell us through the donkey this morning is if you'll just, if you'll let the Holy Spirit, he's trying to tell you, if you'll just let go, I've got the power to get you out of this situation. If you'll just let go of the stuff that is tying you up, he has the power. Listen, uh, some of us are saying, well, what about that situation? What about what I'm being tied to? He's got the power, uh, he's got enough power to handle it, and he's gonna, got enough power to give you all that you need. All you have to do is be willing to let go. There's hope for us like the donkey of Palm Sunday, the second point this morning. Notice, now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village in front of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied in which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, what are you doing with this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send, we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away and they found a colt tied at the door outside in the street and they untied it. What is the, what is, if the donkey could talk, you know what he would say? Thank God for sending someone. Thank God for sending someone to untie me. What am I trying to say? Jesus sent someone for the donkey. In fact, he sent two people. I want to thank God this morning that God, that God sent more than just one person to get my attention. That he gave me more than just one chance. That he gave me more than just one opportunity. That he sent more than one preacher in my path to tell me what I needed to hear. He was tied to the door on the outside in the city streets. I've got great news to you today that you are really close to the door. When he was tied to the door, what am I trying to say? I don't know what that door was tied to. I don't know if that was the door to the stable. I don't know if that was the door that was tied to the pasture. We've got a whole lot of I am sayings around here. I don't think this, was, this one was necessarily on the wall. It might be. But I know in John 10 and 9, he says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out and find the pasture. The hope that was for the donkey is the same hope that we have. Thank God that he sent Jesus Christ. He sent the door to life and to life everlasting. Why? Because the door is where the pl two places meet in and out. When I was in my own way doing what I wanted to do, I did it my way. I lived my way, I tried it my way, I went my way, but when I met Jesus Christ, it all changed because he said, I am the way. Thank God. I went my way, but when I met Jesus, it changed everything. When, I, when my way met the way, it changed my, my life in every way. You understand what I'm saying? Because, God, because Christ came to set us free. The hope of Easter is that you don't have to be tied up, that we can be free. God, the third point this morning, God changed the donkey from Palm Sunday. The donkey that he rode on, he was changed and he can change you too. 
If the donkey could talk, he would probably tell you, and listen, this is my perspective, okay? I, I'm, the one, I, I'm the one who's reading it, and I, I read it a lot of different ways. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not so sure why he was tied to the door on the outside of the door in the street. I'm not sure. Because they could have tied him on the inside of the door of the stable. But for some reason, you know what we do when, we, when people get a little too rowdy? We put them out. You know what I'm saying? When people, what do you do, parents? I mean, sometimes you're like, I, I, I've had enough. I can't get the house clean. They're tearing every toy out, and it's, it's beautiful outside. What do you tell them to do? Go outside and play. Now I know why my parents sent me outside so much. It was me and two older brothers. I mean, we were we were a constant wreck. We were constantly playing in the woods. I think it's because they needed some peace and they need some peace and quiet. Now, from my perspective on this donkey, he was tied to the door outside. He possibly was wild. No one wanted him. No one could ride on it. No, listen, why am I getting this? Because no one had sat on him before. It could have been he was just so buck wild that no one could get a control of him for him for anybody to be able to sit on top of him. But can, if the donkey could speak, and if, if he was wild, then he would tell you. The moment that Jesus sat on him, everything changed. The moment that Jesus got a hold of his life, he went from wild to being occupied. He went from being buck wild to being submissive. He went from being buck wild to being south in solitude. He went from but being wild to being calm. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to tell you that on this Easter, there's going to be a lot of people, and maybe you're here for the first time this morning, I'm here to tell you, I don't know what your backstory is, I, but I can, I'm looking around at a whole lot of people whose stories are not the same way that it's being written right now. If we let you have the microphone, you would tell about how you were just like this donkey, how you were doing things your way, how no one could tr control you, how the, 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 the master sergeant couldn't control you. You almost got cooked out of boot camp, but somehow, some way, God began to get a hold of your life life and it changed everything about you. Can I tell you the hope of Easter this morning is in the same way that it changed the donkey. He can change you because in the moment that we allow God to get in our life, he changes everything. There's a story of a, of a Salvation Army, um, a story coming from the Salvation Army that tells about how a man was getting up there preaching. He was, he was testifying about the Salvation Army and the impact upon his life. And somebody begins to scream out in the crowd and said, shut up and stop dreaming. It's not real. And all of a sudden, about a, a few seconds later, this little person, this little girl stood, tapped him on the back of the shoulder and said, sir, let me tell you something. That, that, that man up there that's talking, he's my daddy. He said, what you don't know about him, he said, is that at one point time, he was an alcoholic and he drank so much money. He said he, would drink, he, drink, he spent so much money on alcohol, I, had, I didn't have any clothes to drink and now I, now I didn't have any clothes to wear and now I'm wearing this nice dress. And you see that woman over there, she said, that woman is smiling while he's talking. She said, there was a day where he would be so drunk from alcohol, he would come in and he would beat her that you didn't even, couldn't even tell she was whether, what skin color she was. He says, but the reason that she's smiling is that one day God got a hold of that man and changed his life. And now she smiles while she does the dishes and she's smiling while she's doing all the chores and she's smiling while she's doing everything. She can't stop smiling because she recognized of how God made a change in his life. She said, so sir, if he's dreaming, let him keep dreaming. Don't wake him up. You see, God may have formed me, but sin deformed me. But when I let Jesus come in my life, he began to transform me. In Mark 11, 5 through 7, some of these that were standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told him that Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. If the donkey could talk, he would tell you that he has to be led as well. He sent two to lead them. Today, I want to tell you the two things that we need to lead us, need to, to lead us in our life today. We need to, I want to tell you, Sister Sandra McLaughlin, who is, who is my, uh, a couple, is going to be here in a couple of weeks for Pastor Appreciation. And if you will say, why are we changing that? Because we wanted to make sure that March and October are given the full emphasis of missions. And so I appreciate Sister Christy and the team sort of shifting that away so that we could get, we wouldn't feel like we're, you know, having to struggle between the two because we want to honor both and we appreciate that. But Sister Sandra McLaughlin, when I was a small child in Bleeners, the very first Wednesday that she came, she began to give us, and if you know anything about me, I, as a child, if you gave me candy and told me to learn a scripture verse, I'm going to learn two, so you give me two pieces of candy. Well, there were ribbons at that time in this Bible memory club, and the, I want to tell you, the very first scripture I, rem I remember remembering outside of John 3, 16, was Psalms 119 and 105. 
Sister Sandra, it was the first scripture on those five verses that we had to learn. You know what it says? That word shall be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I still have that etched in my memory. What we need, there are two things today that we need to lead us as we're on our way to Easter, as we're leading our life. We need the word to leave us. We need the word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our, ma- our path. This past week in Covenant, the Covenant school shooting that took six people's lives, three children and three adults, and the shooter. You know what, uh, it's amazing how in this week, things have been coming out. President Biden, this past, this, this past weekend, I, I completely go against what he, he said to the trans community. He's already approved same-sex surgery for children. But he put out on social media in the, in the platform, and this past week as a staff, we were talking about the power of our words. And so today, as I was sitting here, I had to go back in this morning because I've been struggling about what the, you know, whether to do this. But I want to tell you, our words have power for when they have merited. The president of the greatest nation in the world said this on Transgender Day of Visibility. We want you to know that we see you just as you are. Made in the image of God and deserving of dignity, respect, and support. We'll never stop working to create a world where you won't have to be brave just to be yourself. You may say, Pastor Adam, what's your opinion on this? I'm going to tell you. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. It matters what the Word of God says. And it says in Genesis 5 and 2 that he created them both male and female and blessed them and he named them mankind and they were created. Now I know, listen, listen to me. I know I'm watching online. I know that I just put a target on myself and on Peerless Road Church, but I'm going to tell you something. There are Christians nowadays that we're listening to the voices and we're letting the opinions and the voices of others in leadership and beyond, and it is time for us not to be led by what social media says and not by what Fox News or CNN or Newsmax or any other category of MSNBC. It is time for us to pull out the Word of God and begin to let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let us be led by the Spirit and let us be led by the Word of God. Let the word, let the God of the Bible be true and every man a liar. And let me tell you something. God is not changing his opinion and God is not changing the words of this book based on how we want to manipulate and how we want to lead people. I'm not going to bring people in this church by watering down the truth. I'm not going to change the word. The word speaks for itself. Uh, Let me tell you something. to To my trans community, to the people that are struggling with me even saying this, Jesus loves you just the way you are as he, and he loves you, he sees you just the way you are, to take the words of the president. He loves you just the way you are, but I'm going to tell you, just like the rest of us, he refuses to leave us where we're at. But what if the word of God, what if the word of God doesn't specifically speak about a situation, Pastor Adam? What if it's not so black and white in the scripture? How can I be led by the Word of God in that moment? I'm going to tell you the second thing. we got to be led by the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity. But we, in Romans 8 and 14, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. You're trying to say, Pastor Adam, you're not going to welcome those people in. I'm going to welcome them in, and I'll say the same thing I just said. Just like the rest of us, I'm not putting us out. I'm not saying we're any different. I'm telling you we're all in need of Jesus. We're all in need of the Word of God. We're all in need of the Spirit. Spirit of God, and we need the grace of God to lead us and change us where we're at. Listen, if God can use a donkey to get glory, if a donkey could speak and say, he can can get glory out of me, the donkey would look at me and you and say, he can use you too. Now you can look at your neighbor and say, he can get glory out of you too. Because here's what I'm saying. God used a donkey to speak to Balaam and save a life. God used a donkey for Solomon to ride in and be king. And if God will use the person that is the most unqualified, put his Holy Spirit in them and get glory out of their mess. Do you, we, we talk a lot about the heroes of the Bible. We talk a lot about the people of God of the Bible and how, how they, can I tell you something? They were the most unqualified men and women. 
Moses was the deliverer of a nation. I sat there and watched the Ten Commandments and fell asleep watching it last night with old Charleston Heston was on, on the show, show last night. I thought, I remember this as a small child watching it. But I'm going to tell you something. Moses was the one on the other side of the mountain who says, I'm not a good speaker. He says, I got an answer for that. I'm not worthy. I'm not, I'm not qualified enough. I'm not the one. Can I tell you, you can look at yourself and a man that hit it on the head a while ago saying anything negative to yourself and you can talk yourself right out of being out of the will of God. But I'm going to tell you something. God can take your hangups. God can take your mix-ups. God can take your breakups. God can take everything that you've messed up and he can turn it around and get glory out of your mess and out of your stuff. The things that the enemy meant for evil, God is the only one through the power of the son Jesus Christ to turn it around and to use a mess to bring a miracle out of your life. I am a, I'm as a messed up of a person as you'll ever find but the reason that I can stand here is because I let God get a hold of my life and then I chose to let him begin to use my mix-ups to keep you from messing up. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Listen, you know, listen to me, young people. Listen to me, young adults. Let me, talk, let me talk to you older adults. We don't have to learn from our mistakes. The God of the Bible, when we're led by the Bible and we're led by the Spirit, we can look where we can look and listen to how other people messed up, and we can learn not from your own mistakes. Learn from the mistakes of others and avoid the pitfalls. Don't just say it'll never happen to me. Let God lead you and let God transform you. And can I tell you the reason? that I can avoid a pitfall is because, Jeff, somebody sat me down at a camp meeting. Somebody sat me down at a cabin when I was a teenager. Somebody sat me down in a sermon one time and told me about their personal mistakes, their personal failures, and said, but you don't have to deal with the shame that I'm dealing with. You don't have to deal with the guilt that I'm bringing in my life. God can lead you in a path of righteousness, and he's powerful enough to take you down that road. That's what the donkey would tell you. Listen, you're perfect to be used by God so he'll get all the glory, the honor, and the praise. I'm getting close. The donkey started Jesus' journey on the way to the cross. I have a picture of a donkey that they think Jesus rode on. If we have that picture, you see that? Ain't that pretty powerful? I mean, even if it's not the same, I mean, it's not obviously the same donkey, but, but you know, even if it was like that, I'm like, man, how, how does God work that? I mean, it's, it's pretty powerful. The donkey, when he got on that donkey, he started Jesus' journey to Easter. He started the journey when he got on the colt. Can I ask you this one? I'm saying, who are you going to bring to Easter? If you and I are a lot like this donkey, who are you and I going to bring to Easter? Like this donkey brought Jesus, on the, started him on the journey. Can I tell you, start with yourself. Bring yourself. You say, Pastor, I'm not really good at inviting anybody. I, I know I'm supposed to love, my, love God and love others, and I know I'm supposed to love my neighbor above loving myself, but I'm not sure exactly how to start that conversation. I'm not sure how to call my parents. I'm not sure how to call different people. I'm going to say, this is how you do it. You ready? Get, you, get, write, write it down. Go back and watch it later. You ready? It would mean everything to me if you would come to church with me for Easter. And then you walk away. You don't have to put a puppy dog face on. You don't have to, but just go to them and with all sincerity say, it would mean everything to me if you would just join me for Easter. And then let God do the rest. Go with me to church. I'll tell you, on November the 1st, 1934, was a powerful beginning point of where a farmhand brought a man to church and he got saved. The story goes like this. The farmhand would go and he went to the, he, I mean, the farmhand went to this 15-year-old this boy and said, hey, if you, the little 15-year-old boy said, hey, I want to drive the truck around the farm. He said, if you'll go to church with me tonight. He's like, no, ain't no way. Ain't no way. He said, if you'll go to church with me tonight, I'll let you drive the truck tomorrow. He said, oh, deal, I'll do that. That boy goes to church that evening and then comes to church the, the next night with the farmhand. You know what happened? On November the 1st, 1934, that 15 year old boy who would come to be known as Billy Graham gave his heart to the Lord because somebody chose to use a truck to get the boy's attention because he realized if I can just get him in the house, God will do the rest. Who are you gonna bring to Easter with you? 
Who knows the next person that you could invite could be the next Billy Graham. Mark 11, seven through 11, when they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and while others spread their branches, they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the, is, is the coming of, the, of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus, G, Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts and he looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. When God, the last point that I wanna to bring to you this morning is when God gets control out of my life. When God gets on my life and the God begins to change me, the emphasis is not on me anymore. If the donkey could talk, he would say, yeah, I was given about six or seven verses in the Bible, all about me. But when I brought Jesus into Jerusalem, it was no longer about me. When Jesus said on the donkey, the donkey is never mentioned again, church. He got several voices up to this point, but after that, listen, I'm the, I'm the pastor of this church. We have some great worship pastors who led us in worship this morning. We've got a great youth pastor, a great children's pastor, a great nursery director right now. We've got a whole lot of great everybody around this church. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm just a donkey. I know some of y'all have been waiting on me to say that for a long time. But in all actuality, in all seriousness, we're just donkeys. We're just trying to bring you, bring attention to Jesus. We're just trying to bring him into your homes. We're just trying to bring him into your lives. We're just trying to bring him into your thought process. We're just trying to bring him into your, into your, in your line of sight because we know he can change everything. I know it's past your appreciation, but hear me, we're just donkeys. God is not gonna share his glory with anyone. Our emphasis this Easter can't be on the church. It can't be the music. It can't be come here the choir. It can't be come here the preacher. It can't be come here a personality. It can't be even be come be a part of a denomination. It all has to be about Jesus. In Luke, in Luke chapter 9, 19, 41 through 44. At the end of it, Luke's account, he says, and when he drew near, he saw the city. This is speaking of Jesus. And he wept over it saying, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. He says, but now they're hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you and your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time or the hour of your visitation. Let me tell you, as you stand with me across this building, there's gonna be a lot of things happening this week. We're gonna have things for our family on Wednesday night from six to eight. We're gonna be having tons of hot dogs. The kids are gonna be bringing candy. We need 1,800 pieces of candy. If you need, if you haven't brought yours in, you wanna help bring small egg sized pieces of candy by tomorrow, Pastor Kathy will take care of that. But I want you to mark your calendars because on Good Friday, we're not gonna have, listen, those of you who've come in the past, we're not gonna have Monday, Thursday communion this year. We're going to incorporate it with Good Friday and on, at 6 p.m. You've got an opportunity to sign up in the atrium today, one of four slots from 6 to 6.15. And you're going to go and we're going to participate in washing of hands and, and taking communion. And then we're going to come in here for a time of worship at 7 p.m. Now don't come in at 7 p.m. You're going to miss it. And I want you to come in at 6 p.m. because after you go through the stations, you're going to have a unique experience right here while we wait until the time of worship. Because as Pentecostals, we're not good at waiting. We're not good at waiting. We want to come to the last minute because we don't want to what? We don't want to wait. But I promise you, if you're a part of that six o'clock crowd, you're going to have a unique opportunity to come and be a part and experience what it means to not just sit in a pew and wait for the rest of them to come through. No, it's going to be interactive experiences. And I challenge you. I'm so excited for the leadership Pastor John and Lindsay brought this year, what they're bringing this Good Friday. It's going to be powerful. But right here in this moment, as Jesus comes into the triumphal entry, keep in mind, he's already done miracle after miracle after miracle. 
and he looks over the city and he begins to weep. One of the three times in scripture that it says Jesus wept. He wept over Lazarus, he weeps here, and in Hebrews it says that he weeps over prayers that he prayed. He wept this time because he was on the earth to do miracles. And yet in this moment, Jesus was getting ready to go home. He knew that their time was about to be up. What am I trying to say? Church, I don't want the Lord to look over my life and to weep over my life because there were so many times that he wanted to untie me and I didn't let him untie me. There were so many times that he wanted to let me be led by people in my life that, because I didn't want to hear what they were trying to tell me that I just pushed them away. I don't want him to weep with his voice over my life and I don't want him to weep over yours. I don't want him to weep over your life because you're not willing to give him control. I don't want him to weep over your life because you have, because he's done so much in your life and you're not willing to speak about it. I don't want him to weep over our life. I don't want him to weep over my life because I had in 2023, I had one chance to invite somebody to church this Easter and I missed my chance. I don't want him to weep because that might've been the other person that I was supposed to invite's opportunity to hear the grace of God and I missed it. I don't want him to weep over us this, this Easter. Christmas is not our day. Easter is our day. Easter is our day. And I don't want him to weep because I missed my hour of visitation. So in your own place right there where you're at, I don't know where you're at, I don't know what you're going through, but I'm going to tell you this. This morning, I said it a while ago, that Jesus loves you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you where you're at because of what I'm saying, but because of what he wants to say to your life. So if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, you're watching online or you're here in person, all you have to do is believe that he can set you free. Right there where you're at, you can come to an altar. You can come and pray. If you want to come, if you want to come and pray and accept Christ as your personal Savior, right now, this is all you have to do. You have to simply say, Lord, I, I admit that I need you. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I need you in my life. And I'm asking you, Father God, is to forgive me for my sins for my sins right now in this moment. Forgive me for the sins that are in my life. I believe that you sent your only begotten son to change my life. And Jesus, in this moment, I invite you to come in my life. Forgive me for my sins. And then whenever somebody gives you a free gift, you tell them thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Thank you for the opportunity to change my life. We've got people that are ready to take you and show you how to live past Sunday if you'll just make the commitment right now. Can we pray for courage? Can we pray? Can we just, uh, maybe maybe you're tied up to something. Maybe you've got something in your life. Can we just find a place to pray? God, give me the courage. However you want to respond this morning, however you want, however you feel the Holy Spirit leading you, this altar is open. This is how we do it. If you don't want anybody to pray with you, you want to just have your own personal time, come right here to the risers and you can. But if you come to the sides, you're, you're, you're saying, hey, I'm okay if somebody comes and prays with me. Are you ready? We're going to respond on three. Find a place to pray this morning of how God wants to speak to your life. Don't let him weep over you. Let him come speak over you. Let him come pray over you. Let him speak over your life. Lay it down. Let him feel the chains coming off of your life. One, two, three. Let's come and pray. Regardless of where you're at, if you need prayer, I want you to come and pray. Come. Come and pray. Come and pray. Let's move. Come and pray. Come and pray. There are others that are coming. Would you come and join us? Come and join them. Find a place to pray. Let's respond. Let's let the chains off. Let's be set free. Let's get courage. Let's let God give us courage. Let God transform our lives. Let's respond to the altar.
free this morning? Amen. On Palm Sunday, let's just, let's just end on praise. Let's end in worship. If God has done anything in your life whatsoever, just raise your hand. If God has done anybody in, else, in anybody else's life, raise the other hand. Now just put them together and give him praise. Give him praise. And listen, here's what I want you to know. That this morning, you may be one of the quietest people in the congregation. You may be one of the people who, you know what, we want it quiet and that's fine. You give quiet praise. Do that. And we'll respect you for being quiet. But please don't disrespect those who choose to be a little bit louder about it. Because the Bible says at the end of that, that with a loud praise, the disciples gave praise for what he had done. And so regardless of what spectrum you're on, give him praise. Because he's worthy of his praise. Let's give him the praise. We're worthy of praise. just surround that family tomorrow, today as they go through the visitation. Can we just pray? Can we lift up one another today? Father, we pray for the Luthley family. We pray for Brother Mike specifically and his sister. Father God, we know, Lord, that, that Peerless Road Church, Lord, has become their, their family here because, Lord, they're so far away. 
from their physical family. We pray right now that they would feel the warmth of a, of, a, of a church family. Lord, that they would feel the prayers and the comfort of the Holy Spirit would come directly from, from you. Father, as we turn our, our eyes toward Easter today, we pray, God, that we would be reminded that we are free. And Father, on this Palm Sunday, that we'll pull our children in close. We'll pull in our families. And Father, look back at all the things that you have taken, have, have, Lord, that maybe we've taken for granted. That today you won't weep over us. That today there's no rock is going to cry out for us, but today that we're going to worship you and give you our personal praise. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together. Remember,